Intelligence High School Debate. Hello and welcome to Intelligence High School Debate. I'm your host, So Mi So Rang. What do you think debating is about? Coming to an agreement? Trying to persuade your opponents? Or exploring different ideas? There are numerous ways to define the essence of debating, but I think one thing that we can all agree on is that it's a rewarding challenge. And I hope that eight students competing today will also have an enjoyable time. Now, on this program, we follow the British parliamentary style of debate, so let's first check out its rules. This tournament adapts the British parliamentary style. The debate consists of four teams of two speakers with two teams on either side of the case. Each speaker should deliver a five-minute speech, and teams gain points individually even if on the same side. The first and last minute of each speech is protected from the point of information. Time now to meet our students. Teams and sides are chosen by drawing lots, so each team, please randomly select a scroll. It will have your team position written on it. So first up are the students from Incheon Hanel Academy, Lee Ji-yoon and Kim bo -gun. Their scroll reads, opening opposition. <laughs> Next up are Sewa High School students, Hyun Jae-ik and Jung Ji-nu. Let's see which scroll they choose. They have chosen opening government. Continuing on, tell foreign language high school students Kim jun sik and Moon ga bin They've selected closing government. <laughs> and that, of course, means that Hana Academy's whole students, Kim han il and Choi jun ho will be arguing against the motion. They'll be assuming the position, closing opposition. <laughs> Here are your teams once again on opening government, Sewa High School. Sewa, go! And going in direct opposition is the opening opposition, Intan Hanel Academy. The giant. The dwarf. Hano. And the closing teams, the closing government, Tail Foreign Language High School. Every question deserves a debate. Dale. And that, of course, means that closing opposition, Hana Academy Seoul, will be the last team. Mr. Speaker, we take this debate home because we're Hana Academy Seoul. Cheers. You said people are Okay, those were your eight students. Time now to meet our three adjudicators. First, Professor Joshua Park, who is a member of the Executive Committee of the World Schools Debating Championships. And we're also joined by Michael Dungokshin, former number one ranked speaker of the World Universities Debating Championships. And next, the best-selling author, Chu Sin Young. And last but not least, we're also joined by 50 audience judges right here in the studio. They'll be turning their green lights on when they agree with the speaker. All right, enough from me. Let's check out the motion for today's debate. What would you do if you saw someone whose life was in danger? The issue surrounding Good Samaritan law has gained importance recently, highlighting the legal and moral responsibilities to help those in need. However, it also forces individuals to help others despite their personal conditions. You get punished if you don't help those in need. Should this law be enacted? This house would support the enactment of a Good Samaritan law. In an emergency situation, we render aid to an injured person on a voluntary basis. It's a moral obligation. However, the Good Samaritan law imposes a legal obligation to conduct first aid. So should we enact this law? The students are given only 30 minutes to prepare for their speeches. And that fierce debate is about to begin. Let's hear from our students. They've had 30 minutes to present their case. The Prime Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Prime Minister of the opening government. Looking at the status quo, many people are suffering because bystanders unlock a situation where somebody is in great need. Uh, there are many some cases where uh, some bystanders chose to neglect a scene for four, uh, four 
five minutes, and there were even uh, 40 bystanders in the situation. Because of the bystanders chose to neglect the scene for five minutes, the pers a person had to die. Uh, th these kind of situations are increasing, and this is why we, of the opening government, like to propose the motion, this house supports the enactment of a good Samaritan law. First, I would like to define some important terms in this debate, what we, what, uh, we mean by a good Samaritan law. A good Samaritan law in this debate is setting a law that offers uh, legal protection to those who uh, help, others, uh, to help others in need. Uh, this uh, this uh, Samaritan law would give a legal protection uh, that would uh, prevent the person who helped from being sued in any way. It, this Samaritan law would also uh, give legal punishments to those who do not uh, follow the Samaritan law. The, the punishment we say here is uh, payment of fine that we would have uh, bystanders uh, pay. And uh, there uh, and for as for. Um, uh, de defining other terms, bystanders are people who uh, are present in a, a situation and aware of the event. However, they do not act in any way. Uh, okay, Point of information. Yes, sir. Does calling the ambulance can also be helping people in danger? Yes, of course. Yes. Calling an ambulance is also a form of help, and it, this could save uh, many lives. M moving on to, uh, now that we have successfully de uh, defined our, the, the topic, we, we are going to now continue with our, uh, our arguments. First, the first argument we have prepared is that the Samaritan law would allow bystanders to give help to others in need. The reason why bystanders, uh, some people who, uh, who are bystanding, is because they are afraid of being sued afterwards. Uh, when a situation occurs, most people, in there, there is an effect called a bystander's effect, which the second speaker will add. And the, because of this bystander effect, people are afraid to uh, help, the, uh, help people in need because they, uh, they are afraid of being sued. There are some cases where uh, people who try to help in a moral situa uh, situa situation are actually got sued or arrested by law because, just because they were uh, trying to help people. We of the government would uh, like to stop this by uh, enacting this St. Martin law, which would give legal protection to those people who, uh, who help people, because this act is morally right. Um, uh, so, and this is the, uh, and moving on to the second argument. Uh, Onlooking bystander is morally wrong and can sometimes even lead to murder, which is the worst case scenario. Uh, murder, uh, we, we define murder as an act of intentionally letting another person die or get killed. If, uh, uh, for instance, a person were dying and bystanders chose to neglect ne 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 the scene, of course it wouldn't be a direct murder, but it would be an uh, indirect murder uh, by the bystander's point of view. So we believe that this is extremely morally wrong in, uh, in this case. And point. No, thank you, ma'am. Uh, if, and if a person were to uh, bystand, then uh, this, this would be indirect murder, which is morally wrong. This is why we would have the Samaritan law that would Point, uh, give, give... No, thank you, ma'am. This, uh, this is why we of, the, uh, we of the government would like to uh, propose the motion that, uh, uh, because many deaths are uh, in, in the way. <laughs> Okay, uh, the, third, last, uh, the third argument we have here is that many lives can be saved through this uh, Samaritan law. The good Samaritan law would uh, uh, protect those who help by uh, giving them legal protection and stop those who are bystanding. And in, in these two ways, the, it is obvious that it would save many lives. Uh, this, is why, uh, this, is, this is why many lives can be saved through this, this good Samaritan law, and we believe that it will benefit the society in the, as a whole. Uh, through, through these arguments, we have successfully proven to you that uh, in, the enactment of a good Samaritan law in this society can save many lives by allowing people to help those in need by stopping the bystanding altogether. We are proud to propose. Thank you. Okay, that was the Prime Minister arguing for the motion, so arguing that a Good Samaritan law should be enacted because, among other things, it will achieve the ultimate goal of saving lives. Let's see how persuasive his argument was. 27 out of 50. Well done. We now move on to the Leader of Opposition. Please step forward to the podium. Before I begin my speech, I would like to thank Ariane for giving us the opportunity to participate in this wonderful debate. I would like to start my, start my speech by rebutting the Prime Minister. He has said that bystanders do not help others in need because they are afraid of being sued. I believe that people, bystanders, are not only afraid of being sued, but they just don't know how to help. 
this is the first point. We need to first put on an education system that will help, that will give us the opportunity to learn how to properly help those in need. Because just acting out of moral responsibility can cause more damage. And sec secondly, the prime, the prime Minister, I believe, has suggested that not helping leads to killing. I do not understand how this argument is valid. The opposition will state that we disagree with the enactment of a good Samaritan law for three reasons. Firstly, the ambiguity this law contains. Secondly, this law disrupts human rights. Thirdly, the efficiency and effectiveness of this law is questionable. First of all, there are two reasons why this law is ambiguous. Firstly, the spectrum that this law will be applied is unclear. Secondly, the line that we draw between morality and legal legality is unclear as well. To everyone at the scene of an accident, if everyone at the scene of an accident is asked for responsibility of not helping, that means that the government has to track down dozens of people who were at the scene of an accident that did not help. In case of an accident where CPR is necessary, there are people with license and without license. We cannot properly track down all of the people with CPR license and ask them why they did not help a person in need of CPR. POI, ma'am. Yes? Are you saying that because it is hard to keep track of people, bystanders, you're saying that there should be no law about this kind of no. thing? No. Okay. And also, they said that everyone that can help should help. But that means that a child who is unclear, who can be very unsure of what is happening at the scene, has to be asked for the responsibility of an accident as well. Sorry, I will restate that. A child has to be asked for the responsibility of not helping those in need. How can a child properly help a person in danger? We have to produce education systems, as I say once again, that has to come first, not law, but education. Secondly, Sorry, this... Yes, yes, sir? Surely calling an ambulance is an act that a child can do. And does that, and we believe that that does not require professional um, learning. Yes, but there are situations, there are other situations. We have agreed that calling an ambulance can, can be helping, but there are other situations as well. What if, what if a, there are many situations in the place when an accident happens and no one calls for an ambulance? That is true. We have to first persuade people, educate them, to call the ambulance first, not just gather around. Pyoim, ma'am. Yes? This is why we're going to enact a law that's going to state that people will have to do it. But before a law, we should enact an education that will help us understand why this is necessary. Now, going to my second point, this law disrupts human rights. We have the right to choose to be responsible for the responsibility of a person's life. Some people are afraid to be responsible of a person's life in danger. If we help and the patient dies, we feel a responsibility for his or her life as well. Should the government enforce this guilt onto the people who are willing to help? I believe no. The, the, deputy, the deputy leader of opposition will further explain on, my point, on our points of the efficiency and the effectiveness. So, I would like to conclude again that this law should not be enacted for the following three reasons. The ambiguity, it disrupts human rights, and thirdly and lastly, it, the effectiveness and efficiency of this law is truly questionable. Thank you. Okay, that was the Leader of Opposition arguing against the motion, so arguing that a Good Samaritan law should not be enacted because, among other things, it's hard to accurately determine 100% of the time which bystander went against this law. So let's see how persuasive her argument was. 38 out of 50. Well done. It surpassed the Prime Minister. We now move on to the Deputy Prime Minister. You may step forward to the podium. 
Ladies and gentlemen, honorable judges and fellow debaters, this is the Deputy Prime Minister of the opening government, and this House supports the enactment of the Good Samaritan Law for Good Samaritan Law. Before we move on and start with our arguments, we will first start by rebutting the ar arguments of the um, opposition. So first, the leader of opposition um, said that we should put on an education before we enact this law to ensure that people actually know how to help people in need. We also agree to that statement, and we believe that it is necessary to put on the education, and we are in support of doing that education. However, doing that education does not mean that we can't enact the Samaritan law. We believe that uh, along with the Samaritan law, an education will help in um, telling people how to properly help people in need, and with, along with the Samaritan law, an education will definitely be effective in helping people. And secondly, you mentioned ambiguity and the effectiveness of this law. We want to argue that developed countries such as the United States and the United Kingdom, Germany and Canada, and many other countries already have a form of the Samaritan law in action, and it is already functioning. Point, sir? Yes? Are you suggesting that because developed countries do it, Korea should be enacting this law as well? No, I'm saying that because there are countries which already have the Samaritan War working, it is possible to have this Samaritan law functioning. You, you, mentioned, ambig you mentioned that it is impossible to actually have this law going because it's impossible to track other people and it's, not gonna, it's gonna be too ambiguous. However, I'm pointing out that there are countries which, are already, which already have the law down and working. And On thirdly, one, sir, denied. Third, um, you mentioned that a child cannot properly help in a situation, we're not asking the child to do something that the, pr something that the child cannot do. We're only asking people who can help to help in the situation so that the, pr so that the people who are dying off or the people who are injured can actually receive the necessary help. Point, sir. Yes? But isn't the spectrum of the people who can help amb ambiguous? Um, when we, when, by, the, by people who can help, we mean people who are at that scene, who, have, who, are, aware of that, who are aware of the problem and can help. And finally, you said people are afraid to be responsible, and that's exactly why this law is in need. By having this law in action, we can prevent people from being responsible for, for example, if someone was dying off and somebody helped that person, um, that, that person might be accused for killing that person if the law is not in place. However, however by having the law in place, we can, we can stop the person from being accused of the of harm, and therefore we can, the, helper can more, uh, the helper can help without hesitation. Now, moving on to our points, um, to, to add on, as our um, Prime Minister mentioned, there is an effect called the bystander effect, which is a social psychological phenomenon in which people uh, are less likely, less likely to help other people when more people, more bystanders are, more bystanders are present. And to give an example of how, um, just how prevalent this bystander effect is in our society, I'll give you two real examples in this country. The first example is, is a case where a woman was openly raped in the streets and there were eight people bystanding and they, did, they didn't call the police and even when the police came, they didn't participate in help, helping the police stop, stop the rape and capture the person. And the second incident is an eight-year-old child being forcefully dragged through the, th dragged through the streets 600 meters and nobody, even call, nobody called the police in this situation too. These two, these two incidents are um, examples of the bystander effect and by having the Good Samaritan Law in place, we can have people call the police. So calling the police isn't, isn't a hard action. It's, and we're not for, if we had the law in place, we, those two incidents wouldn't have happened. And through the enactment of this law, our society can save so many more people and allow people to help without the fear of being accused of their help. The purpose, denied, the, purpose and the, nature, the purpose and nature of the Good Samaritan Law is to save people in need and protect people who help. Successfully enacted, this house believes that the Good Samaritan Law will start saving lives. Thank you. Okay, that was the Deputy Prime Minister arguing for the motion and in laying out the reasons why a Good Samaritan Law should be enacted. He mentioned that such a law will mitigate the bystander effect and that the law's efficacy has been demonstrated in many developed countries. Okay, let's see how many of our audience judges agreed with the Deputy Prime Minister. 21 out of 50. That brings a total for the opening government at 48 out of 100. Okay, we now move on to the Deputy Leader of Opposition. Well, the opening government supports the gov <coughs> supports the Good Samaritan Law because by kind of the kind of few points, but the, these kinds of points do not prove to be a reason for enacting the Good Samaritan Law. So, what my partner has said is that 
First, the, st the spectrum and the legality is not really clear. And second, maybe <coughs> people, some people doesn't know how to treat kind of emergencies. So we should make education first and the law maybe later. And the third point was the human rights. The human rights is that a human being has its freedom to choose on the situation and no other, other kinds of human beings has the ability to bring to, to prevent the situations and the spectrums of one kind of person's choose. So, I will now say that two more reasons why the Good Samaritan law should not be enacted. It is the problem of the efficiency and the effectiveness. So, what the opening government has said that to prevent the bystander effects, we have to enact the Good Samaritan law. But by the POI, we have gained the information that just calling the ambulance could also be kind of helping the dangers. So, on the research that the Ministry of Public Safety and Security of Republic of Korea, from by the 10 years to on the prison, if we take a look at how much ambulances were caught the recent 10 years, the number has increased over 150%. This means that as time passed, the more people have the education and the, the more people are trying to call the ambulance on the emergency situation. So the, the bystander effect can be prevented by these kinds of educations. So back on the effectiveness is that it is hard to see people running out of the crowd and treating an emergency. The reason why people hesitate treating emergencies is that because they fear about the following real results on the future. For example, when we help a people who has a heart attack and we have a CPR, the victim might have like kind of the rib bones having broken, and on the future, the victim can might sue the peer -peer person who helped them that because my rib bones are broken, I will sue you because of my bones broken. So, people fear these kinds of situations. People already know that they must help the people. Plus, if the loss happened when the victim, victim is higher than the, higher than the loss of the punishment by the Good Samaritan law, the law would not be effective because they would not try to help the people, the victims, because I don't have, I, the, the loss will be low. It will not make people help needy. Thus, instead of, instead of enacting the Good Samaritan law, we should either enact a law like people should take 60 hours of education on CPR for one year. And second on is the efficiency is that enacting the Good Samaritan law diminishes the efficiency. In a, an emergency is a very urgent situation, thus we need efficient treatments. However, if we enact the Good Samaritan law, this law will diminish the efficiency. I'll give you an example about this. The reason why people try to enact the Good Samaritan law is that to make some people who do not want to help people to make people. It does not mean that the Samaritan law prevents some from people who help them has the sue. So, to make them help, these people would think I should help him or else I'll be punished by the Samaritan law if the Samaritan law will be enacted. However, this is not efficient. If we make these kinds of people have like ethical, ethical educations, they will then think I should help him because it is on the human rights. Then these people ask that it is the time to help more faster, they would act faster. Instead of enacting the Good Samaritan law, we should either have make people take ethical educations more that they, that becomes more efficient. So, repeating my points is that the, op the opening opposition has these kinds of five points. The first one is that the spectrum and the legality is not clear, and the second is maybe the, more, the education is first and the law is the second, and the third one is the human rights. It prevents the human rights when the Samaritan law is caused. And the fourth one is that if the problem of efficiency, and the fifth is the problem of effectiveness. So by these kinds of five kinds of facts, we, the opening opposition, strongly ban, the good, the, uh, strongly ban enacting the Good Samaritan Law. Thank you. Okay, that was the deputy leader of opposition arguing against the motion and in laying out the reasons why the Good Samaritan Law should not be enacted. He mentioned that mandatory forest aid and ethical education should come before the Good Samaritan Law. Let's see how many lights have been switched on. 17 out of 50. That puts the total for the opening opposition at 55 out of 100. Well done. And that concludes the top half of today's debate. But before we continue, let's ask our three adjudicators on how they saw the debate so far. Professor Joshua Park. So I'll be commenting on the opening government team first. So 
I do think that the opening government team did some things well. So, for example, the prime minister did a pretty good job of setting up the debate. Uh, what is it that we're talking about? What do you mean by a good Samaritan law? I think in the deputy prime minister's speech, you did a good job of line-by-line -line rebuttal of what the opening opposition speaker was saying. So I felt that engagement in that regard was done quite well. One thing that I did feel was a bit lacking in terms of your speech and your team as a whole was you had good arguments uh, and setting up, but then maybe not closing the arguments and uh, really following through with additional elaborations. I'll be commenting on the um, opposing team. Um, for the leader of the opposition, um, writing is very different than speaking. Speaking is not writing, and speaking is much more confusing than writing. So you should keep that in mind when you try to speak, especially in a foreign language of which you do not have perfect command. And deputy leader of opposition, I like your swag. You have a nice rhythm to your speech, and I think you can develop that because it lets your audience breathe with you, and um, it's easier to understand a speech that's rhythmed than a speech that's very hasty. And I'm going to be talking about the top half debate as a whole. I think both teams are very clear on where their home turf is. Opening government want to talk an awful lot about the moral necessity of helping out when you're a bystander. Opening opposition want to talk about the very real practical difficulties of implementing this legislation. But to a certain extent, neither team truly wants to go into the home turf of the other team. So the opening government are not super keen to talk about practicalities unless they're saying, oh look, it doesn't really matter that much. And the opening opposition are not super keen on talking about morality, except when they're saying, well, look, we agree with you that it's moral, we just think there's a better way of doing it. So I think both teams would benefit from going for the jugular and really attacking the other team's home turf, in addition to defending their own. Thank you for your feedback. We now continue on with the closing half of today's debate, and for that, I call upon the member of government. Ladies and gentlemen, there are two aspects to, to this Samaritan law. First, it punishes the people that fail to, uh, that fail to enact their duties. And, and secondly, it, it protects those people who've done, who've done good deeds in saving people in danger. Now, I like to focus more on the moral aspect of this policy because the opening government and the opposition have focused um, on, the, uh, on the effective efficiency and effectiveness of this policy. Now, moving on. The, uh, the op opening opposition, what they, gave us, what they gave us as an alternative was education. It was education, slow education, that certainly deters the efficiency and the effectiveness of saving people in danger. And for this reason, we think that this, uh, this alternative that they're talking about absolutely lays the opposite effect of what they are, uh, what they are thinking of as a goal. Clearly, the opposition wants to make an unnecessary process of uh, undergoing an education of of educating people about very clear common sense, such as calling an ambulance when someone is in danger, uh, or simply providing little water or a place to rest for the pe for the person that is in danger. We believe that those things are not very uh, are not things that are necessary that uh, necessary to be educated in a person Wait, because no. We all know in common sense that we have to do those things when we uh, see someone in danger. And we think that, uh, we think that uh, wasting, wasting um, yeah. money, no, and, process, uh, and a complicated process on this kind of education is very inefficient. And Wait, when, ma yes, ma'am. Are you suggesting that people are actually, the reason the opposition will enact this education is because it is not happening? What's not happening, ma'am? People are not helping, although it's common sense. We agree it's common sense, but people are not helping. This is the very reason, ma'am, that we are, we are saying that we should make this a law because if it is established as a law, people will follow it. And if it is established as a law and people uh, follow it by, uh, by the right process, it will certainly be settled as common sense in our society in the long, in the long run. And although we believe that oh, this kind no that this kind of education might be effective, but it will t uh, it will take a very long time for for that virtue to be actually settled in the minds of these people. And therefore, we believe that this is only a waste of time and time and a waste of cost. It's only a waste of uh, sources that can actually be used to enact this law to uh, to make this law a more effective one. And therefore, we believe that this kind of education is very unnecessary. 
It, uh, and also, rather than trying to change people's uh, innate tendencies to help people in danger or not, we should, uh, we should rather just go on to the first step of in actually enacting this law because, uh, because the, naive government, uh, the naive opposition seems to believe that simply enacting this education will suddenly uh, change these people uh, to suddenly change, this pe change these people to, uh, to uh, do the process of CPR yeah. in the right way, always, no. And we believe that because this is sure to, br uh, this is sure to uh, uh, make the process l slower in promoting morality and all the other things in our society, this is not a very al uh, effective alternative. Now moving on to our arguments. The opening government has elaborated very specifically on how the government can enhance its ability to protect its citizens. And now I'd like to talk more about another effect of this policy, which is that uh, the government can send out a social message. In the status quo, the, this, uh, that this um, society is lacking morality and a sense of social solidarity. Uh, by making this compulsory, that by making this a law, it can contribute to spreading the message that all the people in our society are one and that helping others in need is a very common and is a very necessary virtue. No, uh, yes. And why is this the most effective method in uh, promoting morality in our society? Because, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, it is a law. When something is established as a law, is, it is granted a sense of importance and, necess and necessity, which actually promotes uh, people's common sense of morality. The fact that being a good uh, Samaritan has become uh, obligatory will certainly ex express the government's will and intention to promote morality and solidarity between the members of the society. Furthermore, uh, the spreading of this important message brings a much bigger effect on the whole in our society because the atmosphere itself can be changed into one that actually cares for each other and tries to make our society uh, a better one by collaborating with, the, with each other and striving for, uh, for one's goal as a whole. We believe that th it's the government's duty to change the people and the world and enacting the good Samar Samaritan law will be the first step. Thank you. Okay, that was the member of government arguing for a Good Samaritan law. She rebutted the opening opposition's argument that education should come first by stating that enacting the law would reach the desired result faster. Let's see how many green lights have been turned on for the member of government. 35 out of 50, well done. Okay, we move on to the member of opposition. Please step forward to the podium. Mr. Speaker and ladies and gentlemen, we fundamentally believe that the goal of the proposition and opposition are the same, but we must consider the situation that we're put in. The opposition, um, the member of government just mentioned that, we, that they are trying to promote morality through the Good Samaritan Law. However, I would like to mention that the current situation, that this motion itself is a motion, means that there is raising social awareness towards this. The fact that there is a, a action to enact a certain law means that people were shocked by the incidents that the, uh, the opening government has mentioned to us. Many people were shocked that no, none of the bystanders actually went out to do something to help those people. That itself means that social awareness in our society that, that this is a problem is already increasing and therefore there needs to be help for people to help voluntarily. And therefore we believe that this, uh, the Good Samaritan law that the government side gave us, the side that they are going to protect people who save those, or save people um, even, if that, even if the outturn is not good, we believe that that is something that is necessary for our society. However, even more radically saying that people should do certain things uh, and the government dictating a person's way of life or a moral behavior is not in the realm of government or a law. So therefore, we believe that the Good Samaritan Law fundamentally is not very promoting via morality, but actually we believe that that is not necessary and it will, uh, it will not, uh, be, and we believe that the alternative that the opposition provided to you, education, will be good enough for people to participate more voluntarily in the action. So go, to go on to uh, a little vague um, uh, um, rebuttals, we believe that the same line that the government side have been taking to us is that they're, uh, they're, they're trying to save more lives through the Good Samaritan Law, that this will force people to do certain things and therefore people who lost lives because 
because if they, uh, when they wouldn't have, are starting to lose lives. However, we believe that this in itself, like the, uh, the government has mentioned, and we will, uh, like the opposition has mentioned, and we will like to specify, is that it actually goes against one's, um, one's actually the spirit of law over society. And we believe that this is not going to make people certainly moral or have more community sense, like the opposition said, uh, like the government speaker said, because this is just a law that is mandating a person to do certain things. And so therefore, we believe that in a situation where an alternative can work perfectly well without having such, um, such radical and forcing someone or dictating someone to do th uh, two things, we believe that the status quo plus alternative education, which the government has mentioned to be ineffective, we believe that it will be uh, effective enough for a society to become a better one. So to move on to our argument, we would like yeah. to provide uh, you with two points. Um, for the, first, uh, the first opening half of the opposition has mentioned to you how there is ambiguity and how there's, like, it's going against human rights, but we would like to put this in a more legal sense. First of all, we believe that the Good Samaritan Law is going against the spirit of law in our society in two aspects. First of all, we believe our society is run through the principle of legality, which means that every law has to be clear, uh, retrospective, and cannot have any arbitrary conclusion to a situation. And we believe that the Good Samaritan Law is exactly going against this principle of reality, uh, legality we have in, to, uh, in today's society. The government has mentioned to you how there are situations where other this Good Samaritan Law was uh, actually adopted in other countries. However, we believe that there were many situations in which it was unclear who's responsible, and even if they have to, uh, e um, and also, they, uh, it is really vague to consider who was in a situation, who was in a personal condition to not be able to call an ambulance, or who was like who was not in a situation of being able to do th these things. We believe that these are very vague, and therefore goes against the principle of legality we have today, which is to have a clear standard. And we believe that everything in the long run will just go and boil down to a cat fight, where people are fighting over uh, like something that is really uh, whether one person, a bystander, was responsible or not, when there is something else more important is that there is a, there was a crime and that must be solved. And second of all, in a more holistic point of view, we go believe that this actually violates the point that there are the hate principle we have in our society. The law is a minimum a, a minimum institution that helps people, that actually makes people work under the law of social order. However, basically what the government is trying to do is trying to enforce a way of being, a way of behavioral trait to people. We believe that basically morality is not in the realm of the government making a person do something or not. And therefore, we believe that in, uh, under the hate principle, when some, one, one person does something, and as long as it doesn't hurt other people, it, that, will, uh, that, is, um, that is that per person's freedom to do something. However, even if the proposition tries to like, frame people who do not call an ambulance or who do not prefer CPR as people who are in other words, intentionally trying to kill people, we believe that the main focus should be the person that committed the crime, not the bystanders who might have had conditions, who might have a uh, their way of life, and therefore we believe that this is wrong and should not be dictated. And therefore we believe that um, the Good Samaritan Law actually undermines the morality of our society. And therefore we would like to be, uh, we would like to mention that uh, providing more structural help for those who actually voluntarily help people and not make them go through legal charges is a much better way in our society. Thank you. Okay, that was the member of opposition arguing against a Good Samaritan Law, according to the speaker. Such a radical law is not only ambiguous but it would infringe on a bystander's autonomy. Okay, let's see how persuasive her argument was. 38 out of 50. Okay, we move on to the last speaker of the government bench, the government whip. We humans have made great innovations, ladies and gentlemen, in regards to the technology, economic growth, and on. And ladies and gentlemen, it is an undeniable fact that the quality of our lives have increased to an unimaginable extent. However, when it comes to the moral levels, we believe that we still have a long way to go. We believe that um, moral levels in each individual is crucial to the society, not only because it can actually internalize positive message in the individuals, but also because it can um, enhance the quality of the people's lives and be a means for us to develop into a more prosperous society as individuals cannot be satisfied um, only with the overflowing goods. Today, the government stance is very clear, that we should enforce this act, um, the Samaritan law, and we believe that it is irresponsible of the opposition to neglect the moral and the people in need. The government bench do not see a clear reason why, that we should not, um, why this law shouldn't be enacted and advocates that the law will ultimately bring positive values and effects. 
and legends. Meanwhile, while debating, um, the government side was able to cl clarify two clashes. However, before going and in, moving into any of our clashes, we'd like, first like to rebut to the um, opposition side. First of all, they have stated that the bystanders do not know how to help, and we would like to analyze this point in two points of analysis. First, the government clearly stated that the act of helping also includes calling the ambulance, and, say, and surely this does not require professional knowledge. And second of all, plus, when professional acts such as CPR is required, ladies and gentlemen, we believe that standing by and doing nothing is not an effective way, and bystanders should at least do something in order to save this person, and not to lose the golden time provided to the victim. And Wait, plus. Sir? Plus, they've also said that they should enact the education and then make the law later. Ladies and gentlemen, does that mean that after the education, the opposition side also agrees to um, enforcing this law? Ladies and gentlemen, we believe that that is a big contradictory uh, statement, statement made by the opposition. Sir. No, thank you. And plus, they've also talked about ambiguous and kept mentioning this spectrum that is applied to the... Um, Bystanders, however, ladies and gentlemen, calling the ambulance does not require spectrum. And we believe that this is not a point that should be brought up to the table today. Sir? Plus, they have said that there's a chance that also people might get sued. Wait, and sir? they're. Yes. Is the government suggesting to enforce responsibility on people to deliver the message to the government? Ladies and gentlemen, that will be explained. That will be explained later in my speech, please. And plus, they've also said that there's a chance that people might get sued. However, ladies and gentlemen, as the government has repeatedly advocated that the, one of the reasons why this law should be advocated is to protect the people that does not help, to pr protect free people from legal actions that, that actually help the people in need. And plus, the government does not understand why this matter has kept coming out from the opposition side as, as, this, side, as this matter has been clearly rebutted by the government. Plus, they've also stated that the government shouldn't dictate the morals of people and that, that, that the government should not try to control the moral actions of the people. However, listen, we believe that the word dictating is very radical. And plus, by enacting this law, we, we are, is, and is able to, and if this law and the enacting of this law is able to change the perspective, we believe that this is already efficient enough. And ladies and gentlemen, let me move on to my clashes. First, we, I have found, the speaker has found um, the clashes about rights. Now, while the, um, one of the points was the rights of the bystanders getting sued, and one of the rights of, was the rights of the victims. Now, after the law is enacted, we can both ensure the rights of the bystander, bystanders and the rights of the victims to be saved and helped, and which we believe is more efficient. Point, sir? Yes. Are you suggesting that the government can protect the rights of the bystanders when the government is requiring responsibility upon them? Ladies and gentlemen, we believe that requiring responsibility does not infringe the rights of the bystanders, and so that point should be neglected. And continuing, which we believe is more efficient than the, what the opposition side is proposing today, and plus efficiency. Now, what they've talked about is providing education, and what we have talked about is it is too slow, and it is just common sense which does not require education. Again, even though the education is continuously um, enacted, we believe that the perspective of the people has not changed yet, and wouldn't suddenly change just because the education is enacted. And in order to change the perspective of the people, we believe that um, inaction of the law is needed. Plus, the main goal of this law is not, is not to lose golden time. However, ladies and gentlemen, what the opposition side is advocating, education is very slow and would surely slow down the process which goes directly against the main reason, um, efficiency. Ladies and gentlemen, we both, we, the government and opposition, both agree on making the society a better one and surely it wouldn't possibly hurt to give a hand to an old man or, or a child in need. And how we're ladies and gentlemen, neglecting these kind of uh, situations, what the opposition side has advocated is not efficient enough and surely it's not an obligation of the government, nor is a moral action. Thank you. Okay, that was the government whip arguing for the motion, so arguing that a Good Samaritan law should be enacted. And in laying out his case, he mentioned that education is already in place and that it has proven to be ineffective in decreasing the bystander effect. Let's see how many lights have been turned on. I'm seeing a lot of lights have been switched on. 46 out of 50. That puts a total for the closing government at 81 out of 100. Okay, we finally have time for the last speaker of the debate, the opposition whip. Please step forward to the podium.
So ladies and gentlemen, first of all, the, I, we already know that the proposition would love to frame us as the heartless, ruthless people that does not care about the civilians. However, we make sure and very clear that our purposes are the same. We care about the civilians and we do care about the lives of the people. However, the proposition lives in a fairy tale world. There is no judicial system, no laws, no human rights, and they could do whatever they want. However, and they told us we are the naive ones. And I'm here to prove who's the naive one who does not care about the judicial system and the principle we stand on. So first of all, to, to make this debate really clear, what the proposition team offers you is number one, restrictive freedom of rights even though you do not actively violate the rights of other people. Number two, they would rather have a meltdown of our judicial system and the foundation of our nation so that they could have this American law. And lastly, they would have, quote, moral, authoritarian society which is far from the democratic values we stand on. And they would rather force people with what, believe, what they believe is right. So moving on, first of all, there, was, there has been a clash between about whether it's morality or legality. And they have constantly said it's common sense. Now, because it's common sense, morality and common sense has never been, been in the field of law and prosecution. Law and prosecution only exists to have the minimal standard to maintain order and to protect the rights of citizens. Now, what the proposition team is telling you is that they would rather have morality and common sense, which has never been in the field of prosecution. They would rather put it in the field of prosecution force people how to live what they believe is right, which is far from democratic values we have fought for for centuries. And now, they thought, they thought ambiguity is not important. However, in the field of judicial system and in the principle of legality, there is what we call void for vagueness. And that includes who gets punished, why they get punished. And they have no answer in which who, get, who gets punished, how they will get punished. And that, that directly violates the void for vagueness, which is one of the most important things of our judicial system. Number two, we, we had asked the question, who decides who is who should be punished or not. And they said it's not important at all. However, preventing arbitrary conclusion is the key factors of our judicial system. So we believe that the proposition does not understand what judicial system is in the first place and what, the law, what we stand on. We will stand on policy or we will not stand at all. Ladies and gentlemen, now also they have constantly said about why the who should be responsible for the death of the people. And th they said, oh, the bystanders are so bad. They, they just look at people dying. However, what we tell you is that people are fundamentally, that's the responsibility of the government, not the civilians. We, we do not call civilians mothers, but we do call our country motherland. That is because we believe that the, our country, like our, like our mother, will care for us. And yes, it will be very good if the citizens care for other people, but fundamentally, it is the government and it is the nation who should be taking care of the government. By Samaritan law, the proposition is would eagerly toss the responsibility to, to, to the civilians, make the civilians be in the hands of the un unskilled, uncertified hands of the civilians. A nation stands to safeguard its citizens, and the, what the proposition team is telling you is that the, gov the government would rather have the civilians protect for you. Yes, sir. And then are you saying that the um, police and the firefighters can always uh, keep and watch on the citizens, and the citizens can't? But what, we, what you, you have constantly saying is that you should prosecute and you should put people, you, you should find them or put them to jail, whatever, you will put people into prosecution for not helping, even though their role is not helping people. They are not lifeguards, they are not certified lifeguards. However, even though they are lifeguards, and, there are many, and they would rather blame those problems on the civilian, civilians rather than the certified forces of the government. So what the proposition team is telling you is that they would rather hand off their responsibility to the civilians, not the government force themselves. Yes, we constantly agree that it would be good for the civilians if they help other people. However, that is in the field of morality, which is not, which should never be in the field of legality. However, those government forces are in the field of legality, and I hope proposition team will more focus on how to enhance these government forces rather than to make un uncertified civilians as lifeguards. And now the proposition. Although we have gave many alternatives to this situation, the proposition team has simply ignored most of the alternatives. We have proved that there was more social awareness since this is the motion, and that by that, education will be soon enough. However, they do not refute about the social awareness, and they just play it slow without even any proof. And also, we believe that 
if the people are afraid of being sued, we can have policies that protect people from both civil and prosecutorial blame and responsibility. We do not have to take things so radical so that we could have a, see a meltdown of the, our judicial system. So ladies and gentlemen, please, uh, the opposition team is a team with a more rational of, uh, alternative, and that is why we take this motion home. Thank you very much. Okay, that was the opposition whip arguing against the motion, so arguing that a Good Samaritan law should not be enacted. Okay, let's see how many lights have been switched on for the opposition whip. 33 out of 50. That puts a total for the closing opposition at 71 out of 100. All eight speakers have presented their case for and against the motion. And while our three adjudicators are deliberating, let's find out the audience response. Audience judges, if you agree with the government bench, please switch your lights on. But if you agree with the opposition bench, please leave it off. Please make your decision on the count of three. One, two, three. Okay, 29 for and 21 against. So it looks like the majority of our audience judges agree with the government bench. Let's hear from the adjudicators. Cho Sing Yan. I'll be commenting on the closing government team. Um, um, good job. And closing government team's whip really whipped, and I liked it. Um, but I am here to talk about where you failed, so I'm going to have to do that. Your style is very flowery, and I don't mean that as a compliment. When a well-educated native speaker's style is flowery, at best it's pompous, and when you don't have that command of the language and your style is flowery, usually it's incomprehensible. So I get to comment on closing opposition. So I think many things could be said of the closing opposition team, but you certainly couldn't say that you guys lacked passion. That was a tremendously energetic and um, passionate performance, so congratulations for that. I think one question that we all had as a panel at the end of your speeches is, what is your view on the government's role? So in the first speech, we were told that the government absolutely shouldn't intervene in these sorts of things, that it's entirely up to the individual when they make their choice, and that anything that the government does do is really an infringement on people's moral autonomy. In the second speech, there was the statement that, look, actually, in these sorts of situations, it's the government that is responsible for providing people with a uh, lifeguard. Are you libertarians or not? Do you want a big government or not? How interventionist do you want the government to be? I think we were somewhat scratching our heads at the end as to what precisely your stance was. As a debate, um, in the end, we're looking at a team that is pushing forward uh, the most important concepts in the debate in the most persuasive manner. And these things may include, number one, your worldview of what is the status quo really like. Is it a society that's full of people who are really caring and therefore don't need a law to really push them in this direction? Uh, and is maybe education enough? Secondly, uh, in those terms, is education the better way or is having a law in place the better way going forward? And finally, uh, about morality versus legality, to what extent do citizens have the responsibility to help and to what extent does a government need to help or impose duties upon citizens? Thank you for your feedback. Now it's time for me to announce the top team of today's debate. This team will go on to the final round for a chance to represent Korea in the 2017 Asian Cup. And that team is... Tail Foreign Language High School, congratulations! Kavi, <laughs> you look really surprised. <laughs> How do you feel? I'm really surprised because uh, we weren't able to give our best performances and uh, thank you very much to the judges for picking us as the best team and we promise our very best debate tomorrow. Thank okay. you. Okay, and you? Um, so all the participant has performed really great and same, I, I didn't expect for us to go into the 
finals, but thank you so much for picking us and I promise you the best debate. Okay. The third debate of the semi-final round has come to an end and next week we'll be choosing the fourth and final contender to go to the final round of intelligence. So please do join us again. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for tuning in and goodbye.